I'm that yurt guy, and welcome back to part three of the Mega Yurt Build. This is my personal research and development project, a place where I can test new materials, construction methods, and novel ideas, all in the pursuit of one dream, to launch my own yurt company and handcraft one-of-a-kind designs that push the limits of what a yurt can be. Make sure to subscribe, because we're just getting started, and in this episode, you'll learn why we decided to ignore the mainstream approach of a dome and instead made our very own custom octagonal skylight. Now, if you can believe it, the first step in making an octagon skylight is making the octagon. Okay, I lied. It's actually deciding that you want the skylight to be an octagon in the first place. I did that by playing around with a couple different designs and doing some math on the angles and realizing that like an octagon had the right overlay on the circle, the right overhangs, just fit. And it has the benefit of having this beautiful symmetry to it. An octagon skylight has the benefit of being visually striking, and I like the almost crosshair look of it from the inside. So to make our octagon, we cut eight pieces at tidy 22 and a half degree angles, and we do our usual marking and prep for cutting the slots with the biscuit joiner. These slots receive a small oval shaped biscuit of wood that's going to help keep everything aligned while we glue it up. Now, wood glue is cheap and peace of mind expensive, so we really slather the glue on and insert the biscuits to make sure we get a healthy coverage in our glue joint. My preferred method of clamping these wooden rings is a simple ratchet strap wrapped around the outside and tightened, but not too much. This is where the real fun begins, and we get to solve a nice little math challenge. Don't worry, I won't make you sit through a lengthy explanation. Not because I don't want to. I'd love to bore you with the math but because there isn't time for it in this shorter video. So the first step was to cut the initial four pieces that would make a pyramid shape and test our cuts and angles and make adjustments until we're happy. With the first four pieces cut and test fit, I cut the next four pieces, tucking a screw into the strap to act as an extra hand in aligning everything so we can do one final test and make our last adjustments before assembly. With everything fit, we just need to come back and miter the backs of each skylight support so that the pieces of plexiglass can sit flush in our final assembly. I'm going to stay on high alert whenever I'm using the table saw. This tool has made many a four-fingered carpenter, and until I can afford a saw stop, my safety is solely in my own hands. I'll take a second to walk around and appreciate how this thing is coming together and admire my own work before we turn to the task of sanding and prepping for stain. The stain is an optional step, but I'm matching the look of the natural red oak lattice, and I've stained the compression ring and rafters to match. As I wrap up staining our octagon base, you can see how it looks sitting on the finished compression ring. The circle sits perfectly flush with the edges, with the points overhanging. We turn to the assembly portion of the build, and I am always looking for places where I can use traditional fasteners like screws, but hide them so that they aren't visible in the final product. I reinforce with glue or adhesives, but using trim screws to set and lock alignment is crucial to efficiency in the yurt shop. And when you're working as a one-man band, efficiency is everything. It's at this part of the process that we can appreciate all of the careful planning and adjustments that we did earlier, as the assembly comes together and everything fits like a dream. With the wooden frame complete, it's time to do the easy part, a little bit of staining. I don't typically use or buy any fancy tools for this part. I just use, you know, a microfiber rag. And I feel like this helps me control the color that I get with the stain. Like if you use a rag, you can wipe the stain in and you can wipe the excess off right away and kind of see how dark you're getting. And if you want, you can always go back and do another application. But I found this to be a helpful way of kind of getting the color match to where I want it. So far, we haven't had to spend any money on this skylight. I already had the wood in the shop, and we didn't need much to begin with. But we're going to have to buy a quarter-inch clear polycarbonate sheet. This is Lexan, available off the shelf at Lowe's for around $200. I make a small triangular jig to use as a template to mark and cut the eight triangles we need to fill in the eight panels of our octagon. I'm sure there's a better way to cut this stuff, but I use my grinder to cut each piece. It had the effect of partially melting the polycarbonate, which would then accumulate as a slag on the edges of the cuts. Going back with the grinder on an angle, I cleaned off that melted slag and made the pieces pretty, 
you definitely want to wear a respirator if you cut this stuff. Because this is the research and development yurt, I'm experimenting with butyl tape to seal the Lexan to the wood frame. I discovered this product through its RV and trailer waterproofing applications, and it serves an important function. The wood frame and plexiglass panels are likely to expand and contract at slightly different rates. If we fasten the panel directly to the frame, this could lead to cracking and failing down the line. The butyl tape provides a flexible seal that allows for that movement. We also need to overdrill the holes and use washers to give the screws room to move as well. With the skylight complete, we can set it aside until yurt raising day and turn our attention to the focus of the next episode. How do you build a yurt inside a yurt? Well, you have to make a compression ring big enough for the small yurt to fit inside. Subscribe and stick around to see how I did it. If you made it this far, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you a round. We're going boating, baby!